Hello fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Welcome to my channel, The Intuitive Teacup. We're gonna read for love three individual tarot readings, one for each of you. Timestamps are down below. If you're new to my channel, I ask that you click on uh, the timestamp that reads FAQ Tarot Rules so you understand what it is I'm doing here today. That is if you are new and welcome if you are. Welcome back if you are returning subscribers. If you're part of my soul family already, let's do it. All right, we're gonna hop in for Aries. Those came right out. Okay. Aries, let's see. There's con there's a lot of confusion. Um, possibly about, like some mental head games. Uh, it could be involving a Pisces, a Gemini, a Virgo. It doesn't have to be. <clears throat> For a lot of you, it seems like you're really stuck in the past and not sure if it's time to move on or move forward with something else. This feels like you've been in a period. I'm almost getting like hermit mode, like not going out, not seeing anybody, which I know the irony. None of us are doing that. But specifically in terms of your love life, you may have gone through a gut wrenching or pretty, pretty significant period in your life where you felt a little bit lost and confused about your your identity in the world and what you should be looking for in partnership. And I feel like somebody from the past either released you or let you go. Uh, and it could even be in a much deeper spiritual sense of you may have someone pass in your life. I don't predict that, of course. But, uh, you know, someone no longer here in the 3D, right? A lot of you, you just, you went through an experience that really brought you down to your knees. And I just keep hearing the word confusion, confusion. Uh, you could have had trust issues stem from a relationship of the past. But it does feel like you guys are actually grounding yourself and you're about to crawl out of the state of confusion. You're going from seven of cups which is can, can sometimes be upsets and emotions or just not knowing what to believe it can be a card of illusions of trickery especially with the magician coming up so the message is swinging in a more positive direction but i think first and foremost spirit is kind of asking me to acknowledge aries has been through some stuff so it's, it's almost like give them a pat on the back for saying you know you're you're through the worst of it i think most of you are but it's almost like that that little lobster he's still crawling out from that that pit right that kind of um watery sort of subconscious right maybe living in a a more shadow side state of mind or dark night of the soul however you want to say it right i i think there's light on the other end of the tunnel in fact some of you the saving grace is reconnecting with a pisces and it doesn't even have to be romantically it could be a best friend um and even if you guys went through a very difficult relationship with a Pisces and have broken off from them, it's not to say you actually might not manifest a different one uh, in, in future relationships. So I'm, I'm just saying be creative because I know some of, sometimes when I say that, you're like, oh, I broke up with the Pisces. I would never go back to them. There's more than one Pisces out there, right? You, you guys know that? I just like to kind of underscore that. Um, I don't know, though. I, I, to be honest, as much as I think some of you would like to be in a relationship, it feels like intuitively you know that this right, this period right now, whatever that means for you guys, it's more about focusing on your manifestations and setting intentions about how you want to proceed forward in love. I think you need to draw safer boundary lines. That's definitely something I'm getting, especially if your Venus is in Pisces, I'm hearing. Um, you, you may tend to absorb the energy of, of your spouses, of your lovers, of this and that. So it's something about defining your boundaries more um, to what is a good way of phrasing it mm -hmm. to, to avoid confusion uh, I'm hearing my uh, hers and him or theirs and mine or something about there's confusions about material possessions too for some of you maybe when you came to split up your stuff and I'm not necessarily saying you need to define boundary lines about material goods in the future I'm not saying that I think that's more of a metaphor though for Knowing what is yours, especially emotions that are going back and forth, knowing what is yours and what you are possibly subconsciously taking on from other people. Yeah, I just keep getting Piscean vibes. I, like, it's funny. I almost feel like I'm reading for a Pisces right now. You do have two very strong cards of Pisces here. So I hope that makes sense to some of you Aries. Again, maybe you have a Venus or a something, a, a significant loving planet in Pisces. Um, I shouldn't say loving, but you know what I mean. Or again, this may be talking about an ex or possibly someone coming in. I do think you're manifesting something good, but I don't think it's here yet. Um, and so I kind of said the same thing to Scorpio. It's I don't say this to, to give you any sense of defeat. I think it's just saying these are like weekly readings. This week might be a little bit like, yeah, let me get my ducks in a row. Let me figure out what it is that I truly want. Let me focus on my own personal growth and manifestations. What is it that I want to create in this lifetime? That I think is going to help um, align you to people who are more in, I mean, in alignment, but in tune with what it is you want. Meet people who are on the same page in terms of what you want out of a love relationship. Because here's the thing, I get the vibe that a lot of my areas, you changed your mind or you had a change of heart or something that you thought you wanted, you didn't get, 
or what you thought you wanted isn't actually what you needed and you did eventually come to realize that um and for a lot of times you may have been loving from a more spiritually immature place i don't say that to judge or, or to talk down to you at all what i actually see here is that you've reconciled something internally inside of you and you've raised your vibration but at, at one point in your life you may have been attracted or kept in a, a toxic partnership that the purpose of that partnership was not to make you feel shitty it was essentially to hold a mirror to yourself and understand why you react the way you do in love and ultimately take some from that experience lessons possibly very humbling lessons and implement them in your in, implement them in your life in a new more healthy way okay um, because yeah then look you got, you got reciprocity coming in you get back what you give so I think a lot of you you're raising the bar in love and I, I do feel like I say that to my Aries gang a lot um, you yeah you may tend to attract people who um, and I'm not at all speaking negatively about your, your person or about you per, per se. It's just I'm getting the sense that your history is full of people who it feels like they used you in one way or another, uh, whether it was emotionally or God forbid physically or you know what I mean? It seems like you attracted people who they need. You know, you're a fire sign Aries, right? So in metaphor, it's like they needed your light. They needed your fire. They needed your warmth to keep cold because they weren't able to do that for themselves. So then it's like once they I know this is a cheesy metaphor, but it's like once they stood by you and, you know, they, they got your light. Light, they got your attention then they wandered off down a new path and you're like well what like what did you get from it you got lessons didn't you and don't underestimate the importance of that um, but ultimately when you raise your vibe and understand okay the universe is true is clearly trying to show me something about myself teach me something about myself now I can proceed forward with that newfound knowledge so like that's reason to celebrate right um, from sometimes the darkest of times or the most I don't know, difficult, turbulent situations, you, you do walk away with the most profound insights, and I do think that's a very significant message here. <clears throat> okay, so here's... I'm getting a message that it's like as soon as you reach the top of the mountain and you're, some of you literally are going to take up hiking or, or I don't know where you're at, where I'm at it's snowing, but no matter, this is up to you. Some of you it's like you go on a hike and you literally reach the top of the mountain and you have like this profound spiritual experience. It feels like you're connected to the divine. And again, it's almost validating what I've been saying is you, you're able to look back with quite literally the higher perspective and see how you were loving from a place of lack before, or again, you were attracting partners who, who were taking all of your energy and running. You have some sort of very significant spiritual experience where you, in a sense of uh, beautiful um, pride, uh, you know, patting yourself on the back, you're in a much different place now. You're in a healthier place. You are uh, vibing higher. And so it's putting you in a more advantageous position to seek love with the right people. And the divine is confirming that. Just be careful, though, because with that newfound success, that newfound empowerment, that newfound pride, which absolutely, that's amazing, know that from that experience, you're, you're not through with your karmic lessons. You're not completely through with your, uh, yeah, like your spiritual lessons. And again, that's not a death sentence. That's not to rain on your parade. It's almost to prove to the divine that there's going to be a stick to in the new way that you're operating in love. So a lot of you, you're going to, whether this is literal, and I would argue it is for a lot of you, or metaphorical, ascend that mountain and be like, oh my God, like, look what I've done and look who I've become and I'm so proud of myself. That's when your ex is going to come back. And I don't say that to scare you or again, to like punch you in the gut. It's like, you've done all this work to separate yourself from them. Why are they coming back now? The thing is, this is not someone who you would want to take back. This isn't like that missed opportunity. This is the one that really didn't do you well, like the one that did you dirty. The reason that's coming back is because you've raised your vibration. So psychically, your ex can feel that you've detached from them. And you're right, you have. I, I, don't, I don't see you wanting to pursue anything with the ex. And also you need to look at it from the divine's perspective. Okay, like Aries is at the top of their game. Aries is saying, you know, I've learned my lessons. I've been humbled. You know, thank you, spirit. Thank you, universe. I'm, I'm going to proceed this way now in love. Universe is like, you promise? Like they're, they're going to throw this little curveball your way just to see how you re would react. I'm, I'm hearing science experiment. It's, it's almost like playing with your psyche a little bit. And I don't want you to fear that. I don't want you to look at why is the divine I was punishing me? Why do I need these tests? Why am I not good enough? If that's your state of mind, you're not looking at it from the correct perspective. There's, there's a need to appreciate that the lessons that the universe is throwing at you because they are going to make you stronger in the long run, but they're also going to improve your love life. So these lessons, right, they really are to serve you. But I think a lot of my areas are struggling to see that perspective. But 
Trust me, this this feels amazing. The Six of Pentacles. It's like when you put in the effort to distance yourself from lower vibrational energies, you get rewarded with high vibrational energies. Now let's talk about who. You have a, a date or some sort of offer coming from a fire sign, an Aries Leo, Aries Leo Sagittarius. Um... This could be someone you went on a date with once before, but again, maybe this was a misconnection. There's no bad blood here. This is relatively new. Um, there's a couple messages, though, so hang with me, because not all of them will be yours, but one or two of them might be. So if you are already in a very healthy, vibing relationship with a fire sign, particularly a female fire sign, but it doesn't have to be, Aries Leo Sag, if you guys have been together and you want to, you decide to ascend the mountain together and um, go further into the relationship, there could be some sort of formal proposal to... It's like you guys reach a milestone, but there's some sort of offer. Like, would you like to move in together? Would you like to be exclusive? Would you like to get married? Would you like to start a family? Especially from a fire sign. Again, possibly a female fire sign, but it doesn't have to be. I know a lot of you out there watching are a female fire sign, so it can go vice versa. Others of you, this just seems like you may have a friend or an acquaintance or someone you matched with on, on like a dating app or something, and it's saying if you've already gone out once, there's a very good likelihood that you will meet up again and, and go out a second time. Page of Pentacles, it's almost like uh, the student or the child. It's like this relationship is, is a little bit young. It's a little bit immature, but I, I mean immature in the sense it's not fully developed yet. That's all. I don't mean it's fun in games. or and, uh, Of course, fun, yes. But I'm not, I'm not saying mental head games. That's not what I mean by immature. I mean... I mean, it's, you know, it's growing, it's developing. It's like a baby chick, right? It's, it's not the whole bird yet <laughs> for a really bizarre metaphor. Um, but yeah, I mean, you definitely have a date in your future. Um, it could be with a male earth sign, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. Um, okay, yeah, this, okay, so again, this is someone, it feels relatively new or someone who, they're a friend, but it hasn't become romantic yet. They think you, Aries, whether you're male or female, are the cat's pajamas. There's a male earth sign who's just like, damn, like <laughs> they, they want to hang out with you, Aries. They think you're beautiful. Um, they're a little bit intimidated by you, but they would never tell you that. In fact, because they are intimidated uh, by you, uh, there's a, so I'll say this, there's a slightly immature part of this person where rather than showing that, they come on very strong because they want to appear confident and cocky, but on the inside, they're like, oh, I hope Aries likes me. That's really funny. It might be a Taurus, especially. Uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Yeah, this person has a lot of pride. And this person wants you to pick them. They may know that you have options, um, but this, this person will not be an option. Like when they decide that they want you, they're going to make, they're going to do their all to get you. It's not in like a creepy stalker way. I'm not saying that it's not, it's, yeah, it's not weird. I don't mean it like that. It's just, this person doesn't like competition. This person wants to stomp on the competition because they hold you in very high regard. So they're hoping that you will see them in, in a similar high regard there. And something about this may have to do with the Capricorn too. I'm getting tons of metaphors of like top of the mountain, you know, Capricorns are, are like the sea goat, the goat ascending the highest mountain that's such a metaphor we associate with Capricorn so something with a Capricorn may come through for you you may be deciding between two male earth signs uh, again Capricorn and Taurus but Virgo is another earth sign um yeah I mean this looks good I, I would say a lot of you may end up having options and and even so that's an amazing right always good to have options you may have an option between an earth and a fire sign and you may actually choose like Eh, I think I'm good for now. Like, it feels okay, but I think it's like I want more in a relationship. I don't want to settle. So a lot of you are going to keep your options open. Not to play games. It's just I, I don't think you're ready to lock it down with anyone who you just have kind of mixed feelings for. Um, but And it's not to say that some of you won't. Again, some of you have a fire sign where you guys are going to, like, have a proposal or something like that. For a lot of you, though, I do think you're keeping options open. And it's not in a... Um, how, how was a good way to phrase this? It's not in a player type way, like, oh, I'm just going to sleep around with everybody, though you can if that's what you want. I'm not here to tell you you can't. That's not the vibe I get, though. There's just a tremendous sense of pride here, but I'm not going to give my energy to people who aren't deserving. So in a sense, there's a, a slightly, it's cute, though. I, it, there's a small sense of cockiness of like, 
all right, well, I'm going to I'm gonna see how this plays out, but, like, I'm going to let them come to me. I'll be honest, Aries, I think you have two people coming to you. So, um, yeah, not, not a bad reading at all. I think you got options. But um, if you are going through a bit of a hard time, because some of you, that was the main message that came out, Seven of Cups and the Moon, don't give up your power to fear or negative thoughts. Raise your vibe and have faith that, you know, you may have to wander down that dark path a little bit more, but eventually the moon becomes the sun and things become bright and illuminated, and then you, you see where you're going again, right? There's more clarity. There's more warmth there's more fun and energy and good times so stay optimistic in your dating life Aries Aries I got a favor to ask you guys so my channel has been a little stagnant I've been doing weekly videos but um for those of you who've been following me for a bit now if you haven't yet subscribed I would truly appreciate it I know it's a hassle because you have to log into YouTube right but it's free for those who don't know um so yeah if you could log in hit that subscribe button hit the like button that helps even leave a high vibrational comment all of that would help my YouTube analytics and I would truly and humbly appreciate it so if you could do me that favor Aries I would be very grateful I'm trying to grow my little channel here so tell your friends Word of mouth is huge too. So, all right, let's move on. Thanks, Aries. Let's do Leo. What's up? What's up, Leo gang? Let's talk about your love life. Leo. Hope you guys are well. Make sure you check out your Valentine's Day readings that are already posted. I know it's past Valentine's Day, but they're love readings, right? They're they're good for a while. All right, tap into Leo's energy. Leo, only take away what resonates. Drop the rest, okay? Leo. All right, so uh, offer coming in. Um, hold on. Someone's really thinking about you. Like, they're in their head. Okay, so this is someone who wants to present you with a love offer, but they're not moving forward because they're really thinking it through. It, okay, gosh, th there's a lot of messages here. So the first message that came out is that someone has their eyes on you, but it's, it's, obvious, it's not someone who you're currently with. I think this would be the first time they've reached out, but they're not completely brand new. So this is someone who's already kind of in your social network or your circle or I don't know, whatever. You met them on an app or on LinkedIn or something like that. This person's waiting to come in because they know that you're going through a difficult time, or it could be that they're waiting for the dust to settle from something that, it could even be if you, Leo, were going through a divorce. Uh, it, yeah, it's something like they're waiting for the dust to settle so that they can come in at a time where it's not going to further disturb you or disrupt you. This is ironic, though, because I know for certain I did a reading like this for Leo, only the roles were reversed. It was like you were going to pick your moment of when to approach this person because you knew they were going through a lot. I'm not at all trying to repeat the message, but it's funny how that happens. So I, I have faith that this is going to make sense to a lot of you out there. What is this? And tower moments are typically moments of upheaval. It could be someone who lost a job. It could be someone who, you know, God forbid, lost a family member. I don't predict that. You guys know that. But uh, yeah, someone who has to quickly move households. Maybe they got evicted or something like that. And the thing is, I don't know if this is happening to you or your person, but this is why someone isn't coming in because there's too much chaos going on in someone's life. Yeah, see, for a lot of you, it might be on your end. And don't freak out. I don't do fear-based readings. That's not why I'm relaying this message. I mean, okay, this person knows that you're distracted. You may have just recently gone through a breakup, and this person may actually be fearing that you're still very much in your head about your ex, and so they don't want to come in at a time where you still have uh, emotional baggage. This person, it's like they want to come in when there's a clean break, there's a clean cut, there's been like a severing. That's when this person is going to start making romantic offers to you, especially a Scorpio is what I'm getting, but it could also be a Pisces or a Cancer. But yeah, Leo, you may also be in your head about another Leo, but if that's the case, it seems like you may have had a tower moment with them. Some of you may have had elective surgery and there was like a weird reaction to it. it. It's not like a medical, like, oh my gosh, you have to have this operated on. Some of you, like elective surgery, almost like plastic surgery. And and I mean, I just have to be honest, like I know this is completely random and all, uber specific, but some of you may have had, had like a boob job or something with your chest or I don't know what the male equivalent of that would be, but something got botched and so it's like you're having to make up for it. Um, um, so it's ward off of elective surgeries where you can. Again, I don't do medical readings, but there's something specifically about like your, the breast. It could even be like a diagnosis, but again, I don't want to foray into that because that's really not my territory. Spirit asked me not to relay those messages just, just because that's not, you know what I mean? That's not my territory. I don't know enough about that to help you. Um, but okay, so some of you may also be fearing going to uh, something with medical stuff. I, I don't know what that is, Leo. 
It could have to do with the mother or a cancer, too, because ca cancers rule the chest and the breast. So, I don't know, get, get you, like, your mammography or whatever. I don't know. Something about that is coming through. The thing is, some of you aren't moving forward with it just simply out of fear because you're afraid of the results. Um, get the results. That way you can nip it in the bud. And do you know what I mean? There's a sense of not wanting to let your fear show, but your person is very psychic. Your person's very intuitive. They feel your emotions. Um, Aaliyah, you're going to hate this message, but it's actually very funny. Like, it's, it's being related to me as humorous, so don't take it personally. You think you are, um, what is a good word for it? I'm hearing like air sealed, something in like a hermetically sealed. I don't know. I, I like it. Basically, it's like you think you got it on lock that no one knows what's going on inside your head. Like in the inside, you're it's like, oh, my God, I'm freaking out. What about this? But when you present yourself, it's like, oh, as long as I look my best and got my hair did and I put my makeup on, like, no one will know. This person knows. And here's the thing. It's because they're an empath. They're a feeler. So, you know, as, as crazy as you may, you know, um, appear to be on the outside in terms of like, oh, well, I look good and no one can tell. It's like you're overdressing to compensate for something that's very uncomfortable on the inside. I don't mean this in a bad way, but your person's very smart. They know exactly what's going on, and, like, they, they see through the guise is what I'm trying to say. But I actually kind of like that this person seems very receptive and responsive to making sure that you're okay. This could even be a friend, especially with a, a water sign or a fire sign, especially a water sign, though. Like, this person sees more than surface-level stuff. But yeah, you see, so what can I tell Leo? Leo seems to be terribly worried or nervous about something. Are you fearing the ending of a relationship because someone has stopped communicating with you? Like what? Uh, some of you just said yes. Okay, so tell me about that. Know your value, know your worth. It, it, it's, that's always what these messages come down to, right? Like I'm not going to tell you anything that's like a revelation. If you are investing in someone who doesn't recognize your value, then maybe they're not the one. So you can stay up in your head about them and be like, well, maybe if I do this or I change my strategy or this, flat out the right person will make it known that they love you and that they're interested in you. So I, I just have to boil this down to the utmost simplicity of don't waste your time on people who don't deserve your time. I, I think you are lessening your value. You're dimming your light, you fire sign, right? By engaging with people who are giving you like, peanut offers or just like oh hey I'm good thanks like like just minimalistic so that could be your tower moment too especially with a cancer you may be fearing that the cancer is slipping from your grip because they're, they've stopped communicating with you the right person is going to treat you like a queen or a king for that matter right but there there also is um what what am I being I'm hearing materialistic superficial what am, what do I need to tell Leo about that be your authentic self, because this person appreciates that about you. It's not about the bells and whistles. It's not about the plastic surgery. I don't know who needs to hear that, but it's a very specific message. And Madonna. I, I'm seeing the like... <laughs> I'm getting all these crazy hits in your thing. I'm seeing Madonna with like a prayer video. She's like dancing in front of the church. And it's like, what is going on, Leo? I don't... Is, is it like a crisis of faith? Have you... Are you confused about your identity? Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Princess of Wands, Page of Wands. Knight of Wands. Some of you are really stuck on a player. You're, you're stuck on someone who has a lot of chicks. They got a lot of women. I like flat out, I have to say it. This feels like you're, you may be harping on a male who, they just, they have a lot of options and so they're not rushing in to make you their option. Some of you who've already gone through a divorce, you're fighting with your ex because you have mutual custody of the children and you feel like your children are being negatively impacted from the, the parents fighting. Look, I, I, like, I don't even know what to tell. Make it work. <laughs> Victory. Uh, okay, honor your own peace of mind. You, you have to do what's right in terms of not upsetting your own mental balance. So, oh gosh, okay, so some of you have a cancer child who's moving away from home. They may be going to college and you're being very protective. You're being very, you should let them go. You should let them explore their own life and live their own life. Or you're Scorpio too. It doesn't really matter. Some of you have a child who's moving away from college or moving out of the, the state or something. You need to allow them to go because it's going to be crucial for their own uh, personal growth. Um, 
especially for my Leo so strong cancer on their chart, you may be a little bit clingy. I get it, right? Especially for my moms out there, right? It's allow this person to live their own life. They, they won't forget you. They will come back and visit. They're always going to love you, but you need to allow them the space to live their own life. And maybe that goes for the ex too. Uh, yeah, in fact, I think that that's the same message here. The player, players four of pentacles. The player doesn't want to let go, especially the Capricorn. Uh, the player doesn't want to let go of the side piece, but they're not willing to, they want the best of both worlds. They're selfish. They're greedy. They want to have the side piece and they want to have you. And I think a, a lot of you know it's not fair. They can't have both. But I think a lot of you were willing to like bend on your your ethics, your morals, your principles of like, okay, well, maybe eventually they'll disengage and they'll choose me. I, I hope they do, Leo, but I have to be honest. I don't see that happening. Like, I, whatever this is, I can tell. Tower moment, eight of swords, three people, nope. Like, I don't, I don't like any of those combinations. So whether it's the ex or the girlfriend or the boyfriend or even like the child with the tower and the eight of swords, there's something unhealthy that we're clinging to out of familiarity when universe is saying it's not for your best and highest good. Like it's time to move on. It's time to find a victory somewhere else. So if there's turbulence in any situation and it's stagnant, four of pentacles, we've plateaued, we've stuck our uh, heels into the ground and we're not moving. Well, it's up to you to move away from that. Um, I'm, I'm sort of hearing you know better. So this may be a karmic cycle that keeps repeating because even if it's with different people, there's something bigger that you're not understanding about the people you're choosing. And I do think for a lot of you, you allow them to treat you less than you should uh, require. You, you really do deserve more as the Queen of Pentacles, right? But uh, people are giving you lowball offers. They're giving you like page offers or princess offers when it's like, I'm the queen, bitch, right? <laughs> You're the queen me. All right, let's talk about this new person. This is the one who senses your, your unease or your vibration. But again, like you are going through a lot. So this person is waiting to come in because I, they're, they're not looking to engage in third party stuff. And flat out, this could even just be a best friend who's concerned about you, Leo. The king. Hey, there we go. So it might be a male air sign, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Uh, they're watching you like a hawk. They have eyes on you. The thing is, this person is very protective. This person is trying to understand information about what's going on because at this point, it's like they're, they're getting psychic hits. They're getting intuitive hits. Like they may even be having dreams about you or thinking about you randomly in the day. And it's like they want to reach out, but I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is like an ex who they still have a thing for you, but they were rejected by you. And so they're trying to essentially respect the fact that you didn't want to be with them, but they're, they're worried about you. And this could always go vice versa, but what can I, this might be a Libra, a, a male Libra. Yeah, this person's a seer. They're an empath. Very strong air and water vibes here. Uh, Gemini. As well as Virgo, maybe. I think this person wants to manifest something with you. I think this person is interested in you romantically, but I do get the idea that you've put up the wall with them. Or you it's like either you've iced them out because you're not interested. Not because there's a lot of baggage here. This isn't like the narcissistic ex that you hate. It's not that. This is someone who, again, maybe you went on a date and you were like, ooh, like they're nice, but I don't want to date them. And so you kind of, like maybe, maybe you went cold on them. Um... Yeah, I don't get, the, I don't think you blocked them, but I think your energy right now is like, I don't have time to deal with that. So nope, going to throw up the wall. This very much seems like someone, <laughs> I know this is going to sound creepy and I don't mean it to be, but this almost feels like someone who maybe you met on a dating app and this person knows enough about you to look you up on social media, even if you don't text that much. And I don't know, they're just, they're, there's something very psychic and empathic about them. They know that something's going on and they want to reach out, but they're trying not to invade your space, especially the Libra. If you did go on a date with this person, they had a lot of fun. They really liked you. But you, I think you you wrote it off as, oh, like it's not, yeah, no, it has no long-term potential. I don't know. I feel like Spirit is trying to get you to see something about that. You may have even dog sat for this person or there was some conversation about a dog or you, I, I don't know, like you, I don't know, or you just got a dog and this, I don't know, this person commented on the picture of your dog or something about the dog. There's a connection that's just, it, it's, um, it's a, a confirmation for some of you of who this is. And like, yeah, the Queen of Cups, very psychic, very intuitive, very empathic. 
holds a lot of love. Um, also a little bit butthurt that you resented them. But here's the thing. They're not acting from a place of trying to get back at you. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. I think this, it's like their their ego was bruised if you rejected them, but ultimately this person still has a lot of love or affection, or even if it's just small, this person is still very curious about you in a more romantic sense. The thing is, I'm almost getting there on hold. And the thing is, I, I also think it's because they know that you still have a lot to sort out in order for them to come in. Cancer, Libra, Aquarius, Scorpio, Gemini, Virgo. I, I mean, I have so many cards here. It doesn't really matter. But it's, I, don't, I don't know what to tell. Give me one more on this. What's between them? How can we bridge the gap between these people? Some of you know exactly who this is, and you, you keep saying, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Why are they showing up in your tarot spread, then? I think universe is trying to get you to get interested? Or to, or to make a peace offering to mend something. Maybe universe is trying to show you that this could actually be a really beneficial friendship for you. And maybe there's something to be discovered about this person that you wrote off initially. There could be communication here. It's like the eight of wands are flying through the air, but they're all in a bundle. It's like they're trying to get to you, but they're slowed. You know, the, the eight of wands are like Cupid's love arrows. They fly through the sky. They represent, you know, technology, communication, Cupid love arrows, right? It's like this person has them on reserve, but they're holding them back. There's such a restraint between the communication here. It, and for me, I also take that as ind indicative of like... Um, sexual uh, strain or uh, I mean the word refrain it's like they're trying to hold back their feelings for you especially the Sagittarius you have a lot of kings here okay some of you are getting out of a, a marriage and this person is going to be the shoulder you cry on and then they're going to catch feelings for you and you're going to run and be like oh I didn't mean it like that and then later you're gonna be like oh actually I do love them <laughs> I just gave you the five-year story condensed in two seconds some of my Leos are going through a very difficult breakup, possibly with a king of coins, uh, 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 Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I almost said Gemini, though, so for some of you. <clears throat> and yeah, you, you know, tower moment all up in your head, you know, letting them treat you like shit because you don't want to lose them. Eventually, you're going to free yourself from an unhealthy or toxic situation. You're going to like, again, there's like a friend, someone you've put in the friend zone. They like you, but you don't feel the same. A lot of you are going to change your mind, but you have to separate yourself from person A entirely before you're ready to love person B. And I would say that's good. That's healthy, right? Um, just be careful that you're not sending mixed signals because I will say this person is incredibly sensitive. And if this is a person who, who's always there for you, who's always there when you need them, make sure you're not abusing that friendship. Make sure you're not taking advantage of it. Um, and others of you, if that story doesn't make sense, you're going to continue messaging with, with um, the, the King of Pentacles. Uh, I keep wanting to say different signs. I almost said Scorpio. Uh, King of Pentacles typically, it's not to say it couldn't be a Scorpio, typically is Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. I don't know why my brain is like, I've lost all the signs today. I mean, Mercury is in retrograde. Maybe that's why. But I, I feel like the signs are not that important. Some of you are going to keep messaging with someone who potentially has king potential. Um, potentially has king potential. Nice. <laughs> Mercury retrograde. Eh. And then possibly something with a Pisces. But you may be fearful of the long-term commitment or vice versa. I would. So here's the thing. If, if it is a especially a male earth sign, um, they may be coming in with big proposals and big offers. And you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. So... You do you, boo. If you're not ready for it, then, then don't take them up on it. But I, I would argue that maybe you're trying to be shown something new. Don't, yeah, don't operate out of fear. Don't let fear get the best of you. If it feels good, if this person treats you right, then hey, maybe it's a divine pairing. Maybe you guys are going to play uh, husband and wife, mommy and daddy vibes. I don't know, something like that. All right, Leah, that's what I got for you. All right, well, let me shuffle these up, and then we're going to move on to Sagittarius. So Leo, if you're still here, thanks. Um, I appreciate you guys. Help me grow my channel. If you uh, if you haven't already subscribed, I would truly appreciate it. I know it's a hassle. You have to log into YouTube and hit that subscribe button. But my channel's plateaued a little bit, so if you I need I need more encouragement. If you guys want me to keep turning out these videos on a weekly basis, I'm trying to grow the channel, and it's been stagnant for like three months. So like, share, subscribe, even just word of mouth. Tell your friends about my channel. I would so appreciate it. I would so appreciate it, Leo. Um, I love my Leo gang. You guys have been pretty, pretty loyal followers. So thank you for that. Let's keep it going. Let's bring on the more, bring on board more Leos. 
All right, we'll do that. It's taking me a long time to shuffle here. Sagittarius. We're going to tap in Sagittarius's energy. Let's do this. Back. Sagittarius. Sagittarius's love life. <laughs> okay what's up Sagittarius let's talk about your love life check out your Valentine's Day reading I just did a, uh, a round of those all right Sagittarius in love what do we need to know what's the storyline Sag take only what resonates release the rest Ooh, those came right out Ooh, you got the lovers right off the bat maybe a Gemini maybe something sexy with a Gemini oh yeah double Gemini vibes and Page of Swords. All right. So communication with your Gemini. It could also be a Virgo, potentially someone who has very strong um, uh, air placements in their chart, right? Because the, the common link between Gemini and Virgo is that, that planet Mercury, right? Which is all about communication. Um, and you have a Page of Swords. So this is someone who's going to communicate with you a lot. <clears throat> this is someone who holds a lot of power. Um, and I kind of heard over you but i don't know if that's necessarily in like the the uh, crazy or fearful way we're anticipating uh, it could be that you hold them in very high regard like i'm almost hearing the word powerhouse this person is a powerhouse in your life um especially in the bedroom my goodness look at that um but yeah no there's there's something very strong about this connection but almost i think you may also be like a little bit fearful or intimidated by them <clears throat> Okay, so here's the message. It has nothing to do with an unhealthy relationship where this person is controlling you. That's not this person. I think it, in terms of they have a lot of power in this relationship, it may actually have to do with their money. This person may make a lot more money than you or they may come from some sort of background that is more... I don't know, something that would intimidate you, Sag, and I know that's not a lot, but there's something about this where you might be a little bit shy or naive. Again, not at all something I associate with Sagittarius, but you all are different, right? Something about this intimidates you to communicate with them because you, you hold them in very high regard. I, I just keep hearing the word timid. So tell me about this. All right, well, actually, let's ask this. And, yeah, especially a Virgo, too. I'm getting a lot of Virgo vibes. How do I want to clarify this? <clears throat> Don't engage in third party stuff. If this person's already taken, <laughs> go about your merry day, but the other way. Yeah, don't engage in third party stuff. Don't be childish. I just heard. Sorry, no offense, Sag, but that, that's what came out. Don't be the trickster like the magician, right? Don't act childish and foolish by messaging somebody you know is already taken. Yeah, it's already married. That's one message. But for most of you, that's not the main thing. <clears throat> Some, okay, I'm hearing this person changed your mind. And for most of you, it's a very positive way. Meeting this person, it allowed you to imagine your life in a different way that you never thought possible or you never thought you deserved. And again, it may have something to do with social class or money. Um, it certainly doesn't have to, but that's going to make sense to some of you. It, something about meeting this person is beneficial and it allows you to create a different life than you ever thought. It opens the doors to you which were previously blocked. It may have to do with a cancer or a Gemini cancer cusper. I, I, like, I don't even know what to clarify. I, I, just tell me more, I guess. I, I don't have anything I, I want to know yet. How do they feel about Sag? Okay. They like you. Yeah, there, there's good compatibility here. Air and fire. It doesn't have to be those signs. It's just simply saying, how do we get a fire to grow? We provide it air and oxygen, right? Like this could grow into something very, uh, I'm hearing chemical explosion. There could be a lot of passion here. Hello. <laughs> Sag, look at you. Are you getting a good reading this week? Good for you. You deserve it. I put you guys through the ringer the last couple of weeks, haven't I? Okay, so there's healing. Okay, there's something about this relationship that allows you to connect with your inner child. I know that's a little bit cheesy, uh, but very important. Uh, um, uh, what, what do we want to call it? Childhood trauma, childhood wounds. There's something where this person is very open to helping you heal that if you decide to share it with them. And I think a lot of you will. That's what I mean. Something that where you saw it as a blocked door. It may have even been, yes, cheesy to your heart. It's like before, if you put up a wall and you weren't allowed to share a certain part of yourself with people or you were too uh, timid or, or ashamed or whatever it is, something about this is very compatible and it makes you want to share things with them. Um, so my, for my Sagittarians who are a little bit guarded or a little bit more 
calculating in terms of well, how much is too much and like you're, you're worried about all these boundaries, especially if you have strong Scorpio in your chart, right? This person, they, they like allow you to let your hair down, especially an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. They make you want to vocalize what it is you're thinking and feeling. Um, and with that, it's just a profound sense of healing th that occurs when you match with this person. Um, there's happy tears, but also I, I'm hearing the word welling, like your eyes are welling up. And so maybe some of you are like professing a truth to someone that you've kept hidden for a long time. Or there's happy tears, but there's also the sense of I can finally breathe again. Some, yeah, something that you were, it was very secretive. It was something that you didn't think was appropriate to share something it was like your dark little secret you eventually you shared it and with that came this profound and overdue period of healing and the thing is i think your person is there to help you through it this person may have even helped you through a difficult health issue and this may have been in the past um yeah if any of you had like a very serious diagnosis and have since healed from it you may have had like ra uh, is it radiation is that the right that's no, not the right term uh, essentially I'm, i have to be honest i'm getting almost like cancer i don't ever predict that know that but it could be if you had a very serious illness in the past and you recovered this was that person who was calling you in the hospital or this was that person who was uh, you know uh, i don't know bringing you meals in bed or this you know helping you heal something this person may even work as a doctor or a nurse or you might as well sagittarius this person is a natural, intuitive healer. Ooh, sad. This is a deep one. Only in Sagittarius. Yeah, you guys are all in. You, you guys are, you guys are all bundled up, <laughs> and yeah, it's like cuddled, cuddled up. This is the one you've been waiting for. <clears throat> this person wants to build with you. It could be an Aries. It could be a Capricorn. Could be another Sagittarius. You you have a lot of signs, so I don't even think the sign matters that much. You guys are going to have three children, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, is there something significant about the number three here? You have the three of coins, you have the three of wands, and you have three pages. So pages represent students or children. I'm also hearing third time's the charm. So this could even be a relationship where it, it came and go from your, or, sorry, it, came and went from your life a couple times due to circumstance. Again, this is not this is not someone who you effing hate, someone who ruined your life, your toxic narcissistic ex. That's not this person. This could have been a relationship where you guys lived in the same city and it was convenient, but then it, it fell apart because that changed, right? Because you moved, didn't you, Sag? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but and there's something here about third time's the charm. This could even be someone you, you knew since junior high and maybe you dated for a second in high school and then maybe it returned in college and I don't know. There's, I think this, this has potential to be very uh, long lasting, but I, I keep getting it happened in intervals. There was stops and starts, but again, I just want to underscore this is not the person who didn't treat you well. This is not the person who, again, there's not a lot of grudge or there's no grudge or resentment here. If anything, you went through a very difficult time, but it feels like this person helped you to heal. And I think it, it cemented the fact that this was going to be a lifelong friend. A lot of you just didn't realize it was going to be like your lifelong romantic suitor as well, especially with the Gemini. There's such a, a really beautiful yin and yang to you guys. And because Gemini is your opposite the zodiac wheel, something about that seems very important and possibly something with a Virgo as well. Yeah. And others of you, I don't know, I, three children, three siblings. Are you one of three or do you have triplets? Do you have, I don't know, do you have three dogs? Something about the number three is very important here. You have it a lot. <clears throat> Threes in tarot typically represent well a lot of different things, but ultimately teamwork, building things together. Um, as well as like almost like mind, body, spirit, you know, father, son, holy ghost, like the holy trinity. There's a there's an intense spiritual connection here, Sagittarius. I really like it. And I'm getting something about the matrix. Is it the blue pill or the red pill? <laughs> Even pills. I'm telling you something about healing. You, especially from a, a significant medical issue in your life, this person was your this person was your support system. This person was your backbone. And a lot of you are returning to the one that you, okay, sorry. Last and final message here. It really is reiterating what I've already said to you. 
you went down this path with someone and for one reason or another, it didn't work or it wasn't the right time. So you pursued door number two, right? Essentially, you know, door number one, door number two, path number one, path number two. We're seeing blue and red. I feel like that's probably significant to some of you too. Eye color, hair color. I don't know. Something about blue and red. Um, door number one, you, you explored and you're like, okay, maybe, but yeah, no, not, no, it doesn't feel right. So you tried door number two. Eventually, you go back to door number one is sort of what I'm getting. And that literally might be someone's address. Somebody may have an apartment and they're like apartment number one or something like that. They're your number one, Sagittarius. I like that a lot. Look, there you are. There you are. You got your eye on them. Others of you, I would say, if none of this makes sense, others of you just simply have choices and options. Two of wands, right? The lovers can ultimately be an internal choice. It can be balancing our dark and our light energies, our masculine and our feminine, or however you want to say it. It can be options and choices as as well in our love life, right? Important decisions we have to make. I mean, I'm just going to say you, you got three people here knocking on your door. If that's the case, if you're just kind of on the dating apps or however, meeting people and mingling, it kind of seems like you have three, I don't want to say you're keeping on the back burner, but you may be interchanging three different people to kind of see which one you like better and who you want to make like your, if you are looking for a long-term partnership, but I know not all of you are. You have three options, but here's the thing. If that's the case, none of them are on your level right now. And this is just a week reading, right? You know, new messages next week. But if you're being presented as the queen of wands, you know, your fire sign, right? It's like you have page offers coming in. So again, this could be a fun little romp in the bedroom or whatever. But long term, I don't know. I think you should aim higher. I think you should shoot higher. Again, if this is all kind of new, if none of that other story made sense. So... All right, Sagittarius, that's what I got for you. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I need your guys' help. My channel has just, like, plateaued. It's not growing. Every time I post videos, I lose subs. So if you've been a loyal follower of mine, first of all, thank you so much. But also, if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe. I know you have to log into YouTube, but you can do it, right? Um, if not that, uh, like, leave a positive, high vibrational comment. That all helps my analytics. Um, and what was the last thing? And share with your friends. Word of mouth is huge. So if you like my style, if you like my readings, feel free to tell your friends to check out my channel. I would truly appreciate it. Other than that, Sagittarius, thank you for joining me here today. I will see you next Tuesday for more tarot readings. Bye, guys. Welcome to the Intuitive Teacup, my friends. These tarot readings are meant to motivate, empower, and inspire you. Please keep an open heart and an open mind as you watch these general readings, as some material will resonate and some might not. Do have faith it is serving someone out there, and take away only what resonates for you. Please release the rest. Feel free to book a personal reading with me if you would like something catered specifically to your inquiries and energy. That information is down below for you. You are responsible for all actions and decisions and the vibe that you bring to this channel. This is optional advice or guidance, and of course, you will always have free will. Check the box below for my social media links, the decks I use, and more information on this channel. Let's hop into your tarot reading.